While you get your Bibles out, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Don't, forget. don't forget. If you don't, if you don't pay your tithe. Pay your tithe. Give an, and give an offering. Your money, Your money will, be cursed. will be cursed. Christmas coming up. Christmas coming up. <laughs> I know how that go. Just want to let you know. And you can get your prayer. Can't help the same. Amen. We don't want to go into the new year with the cursed money. Amen. Amen. You don't want to go into your new year, 2018. You want us to pronounce blessings over you, but you ain't honor God's word. You can't do it. The Bible says, I can't curse whom God is called blessed. But I can't, I also can't bless whom God is called cursed. Amen. Pay your tithes and your offering. You might be able to buy a little bit more for Christmas. The Lord might give you some surprise money. I didn't say gambling money, though. Oh, boy, money. And if you do just by chance get that, <laughs> God will clean it up as you pay your time. <laughs> he will clean it up on the way. Y'all, the same. Y'all, the same. If you win the lottery, God will clean up your ten percent on the way. I'm not promoting that you play the lottery, but I am saying He will clean it up. <laughs> All of it will stay for the kingdom. Of God, it will. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. I am still, for some odd reason, on this series dealing with miracles. He won't let me let it go. So we go into another story that's familiar. Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 25. I'm going to say a little something get out the way, y'all. Mark chapter, 20, chapter 5, verses 25 through 29. I'm going to read the, it's going to be the message version. I think they're going to have it up there. Message version. If you got the King James, that's fine. You should be able to follow along just a little bit. But the message version is for folks that don't read their Bible. So it helps us understand. Amen. Amen. You ready? Say what? Oh. You got it, Maria. A woman who had suffered a condition of hemorrhaging for 12 years, a long succession of physicians had treated her, and treated her badly, taking all her money and leaving her worse off than before, had heard about Jesus. She slipped in from behind and touched his robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can put a finger on his robe, I can get well. The moment she did, the flow of blood dried up. She could feel the change and knew her plague was over and done with. At the same moment, Jesus felt energy discharging from him. He turned around to the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said, What are you talking about? With this crowd pushing and jostling you, you're asking who touched me? Wait a minute, everybody shouting at the church today? <laughs> what you asking? <laughs> Who touched me? He said, yeah, it's a difference in one person's touch. One person touched me different than the rest. Yeah. Uh, a thousand people touching you, how you gonna ask the question, who touched me? He said, but it was somebody that touched me differently than the rest. Keep going. Does this have touched you? But he went on asking, looking around to see who had done it. The woman, knowing what had happened, knowing she was the one, she stepped up in fear and trembling. She knelt down before him and gave him the whole story. Second, say she, she knew she had touched him when he asked, but she was skeptical about telling him. But the Bible say she told him the whole truth yeah. and nothing but the truth. So help her God. Yeah. Oh, somebody missed that. <laughs> so she told him the whole story. She ain't leaving it now. Now catch this for about five people. There was hundreds of people around. But she didn't care no more. She was at the point to where she decided that I got to get the 
however I can get it. No matter what it look like. Jesus said to her, daughter, you took a risk of faith. And now you're healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. Be healed of your plague. <laughs> Read that again. Jesus said to her, daughter, you took a risk of faith. And now you're healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. Be healed of your plague. I'm gonna I'm kind of expose a lie they told in church. I told it too. <laughs> but I saw it differently when I read it. This time, he said, he said, listen, woman. He said, you took this risk. And because of the risk you took, he said, now you are. First lie they told, they said, Jesus healed her when she touched it. No, he didn't. He said, you healed. You hold. He said you heal and you hold. He said the reason why I'm telling you you heal and you hold, he said, because you had been healed before, but you lost your healing. He said, and that's why you are going through this repetitive cycle over and over again because you had been healed, but you had been made whole. All right. All right. He said, so I had to not only heal you, but I had to make you whole so it wouldn't show back up again. Because you've been to the doctor, gave him all your money. Now that you're whole, he said, now I'm going to prophesy to you. And I'm going to tell you, he said, I want you to live well. Huh? Live blessed. And be healed of your plague. Now watch this. He didn't say sickness. He said plague. That means that what she had been dealing with wasn't the illness. She thought she was sick. That's why she spent all her money on the doctors and they said she got signs and symptoms of a thing, but I just can't put my hand on what it is. Because she had a plague. Not a sickness. So, why don't you touch your neighbor today and say, neighbor, he ain't got no topic. God gonna allow you today to declare your own miracle. surrender my will to your will. I surrender my way to your way, God. I give myself to you, God. I obey your will, your word, oh God. Let them not see me, but see you that sent me, oh God. Let your power, oh God, drop in this place like never before. Let your glory, oh God, be in this house, oh God. I can't do this without you. I don't want to do it without you. I shall not speak or talk without you. I am a man of unclean lips. I hang around folk with unclean lips, oh God. I need you to clean me up. Purge me out, oh God, so that you may use Oh God, to the best of your ability. Oh God, I surrender this vessel a living sacrifice. Oh God, I pray God that it's holy and acceptable. Oh God, because that's my reasonable service. Oh God, I ain't have to pay nothing for it. Oh God, I just got to offer you me. Oh God, and I give you myself today so that you may declare your word. And I pray God that your word today fall on good ground, good hearts, good minds. Oh God, that's apt and ready to receive. Oh God, with us said the Lord in your Son Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 Yeah. I ain't had no topic, y'all, because I had a lot of topics. I'm going to throw out one here at the very beginning. Throw out one here at the very beginning. I heard somebody preach this, and while I was studying, I said, oh, that's good right there. They were saying something, they didn't even know what they said. And so when I was studying this, that just kept ringing in my ear. 
God said, what you can't die from, just live with. All right. All right. <laughs> he said, because that that you have can't take you out. Huh. He said, so since it can't take you out, it doesn't have the authority and the power to kill you. He said, since it cannot kill you, just live with it. Uh, he said, because sometimes the condition that you have, you must stay in. But it doesn't mean it's going to wipe you out. Let the church say, it's not going to wipe me out. <laughs> but some of you have been saying this, and I'm going to look for my five shoulders right here. Some of you have been saying this, I have been in, catch the text, I've been in the longest cycle of my life. That was the one with the issue of blood. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. She, the children there, she had been having a cycle for 12 years. That didn't just happen once a month. It happened every day of her life for 12 years. Yeah. 12 years. It, it is the story and the question, Aisha, that says, how long do I have to endure until you deliver me? The area that I'm supposed to live with is making me weak. I can't get no, I'm looking for my five witnesses. He said, it is hard for me to live a life weak every day when I'm supposed to be strong. Y'all know about the cycle now. Most men don't know, but if you got a wife, you can find out about it temporarily. You ever had a girlfriend, you find out about it, that cycles are meant to excrete blood, but it gets rid of toxins. So, if you stay too long, then the body gets weak because of the loss of blood. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so, the more blood you lose, the weaker you get. And so this lady had been losing blood for 12 years. There's a juxtaposition in the text because Miss Carissa, if she had been losing blood for 12 years, she hadn't died yet. And if you lose blood after so long, you should die. So she had accepted the fact that 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 she had, it couldn't kill her, so she might as well just learn to live with it. Yeah, had it for 12 years at the church say 12 years. 12 years. The woman is bleeding when she should be bleeding. She's dealing with something at a time that she's not supposed to be dealing with this. God is saying that some of you are dealing with some stuff that you don't think you should be dealing with in this moment, in this time, especially at now, not in a time like this. But God said, what has happened in your situation because you felt like you should be dealing with it, it has changed the, the setting and the condition of your hormones. Yeah. I said, what, what God, help me, help me to understand. He said, because when you deal with a cycle too long, it changes your hormones. Or even when you're on it, he said, it changes the moves, the personalities. Yeah. You know, your wife can be happy, but she can be on a cycle. She can be mean. She can, she can be happy, go lucky. She can be smiling every day, but she can have a bad attitude and don't want to talk to nobody. When she's going through that particular time of the month, she don't want to be touched. All sorts of things can happen when they're going through this time frame, which normally lasts about a week. But this lady had been on it for 12 years, so I can only imagine the type of attitude she had, the personality she had developed. I, 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 wouldn't want to be around it, even though if you had been bleeding like that, they put you as an outcast because typically your personality, your attitude, your mood sweet, nobody want to be around that because you always was up and down just like a roller coaster. <laughs> Don't nobody, the Bible say, it'd be better to live on the rooftop than to be in the house with a contentious woman. There's better to be by yourself than be around somebody that complain a lot. I know I'm talking real good, y'all. Y'all like amen. So I found out that her bleeding rendered her dysfunctional. Y'all, I can't get no amen. I'm going to get out of here real quick, y'all. Y'all y'all just stay with me. So what is happening in this process, her body is not able to release the chemicals and the toxins that's not good for it. Therefore, it causes complications with the blood flow during the cycle of most women known as the body cleansing process. Right, right. Oh, y'all, but I just destroyed the text because 
I told you if you could have a cycle, you couldn't get rid of the toxins. But she had been having one for 12 years. So her cycle really ain't all that bad because she's been going through this cycle for 12 years. So I dug into the text and I found out God really didn't have a condition in her life. He had just been trying to take her through a purification process. I can't get no amen like that. And neighbor say cycles ain't all that bad. <laughs> Some of you have been in a cycle so long, oh yes God, that you have accepted it and it has become or developed your identity. Watch this. He said to me last night, he said the crazy thing is your cycle has produced your identity because of the length of the cycle. And because of the length of the cycle, you have lived with it so long that you don't know how to live without it. Wow. Therefore, a fear has crept into your life, into your thought pattern, because the problem or the situation or the condition is the only thing that you know. And to be delivered or to be healed would cause you to start over again, and you would rather stay the way that you are, in the shape that you are in, and with the condition that you have, over from scratch. Oh, wow. I just prophesied you're good right now. Yes, right. But God told me to tell the five people that I'm speaking to this morning that been in this cycle of life too long that has developed an identity that you call self. God said it is dangerous to live a life under an identity that was never meant to dictate your life because your loss of hope and faith is the result of you accepting the life where you are. This lady had been in the cycle 12 years. It is easy after 12 years to give up hope. Right. Oh, you get better after being there 12 years. But I dug deeper, mama, about the cycle. And I found out that when you are on your cycle, I shout now as a married man when the cycle show up. <laughs> I, see, it went over some people's head. I just, I just think. We don't take no preservatives. We don't use nothing to help us out. So every time they show up, now it's a sign of rejoice. I can't get no amen. I wish I, it's a sign to shout because it lets me know that. Rate that speeds up 
blood pressure are normal. Peripheral circulation largely remains unchanged. I said, oh, okay. Okay, so I understand what the wife goes through on those seven days of the week. Especially if it's a little bit heavier than normal. She experiences the 15% blood loss. So I kept digging. I said, this ain't the lady in the tent. So class 2 hemorrhage involves 15 to 30% of the total blood volume. A patient is often has rapid heartbeat with a narrowing of the difference between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. Yeah, yeah. That don't mean that. The, so it just, what that means is it causes your blood pressure to go up and down. When your blood pressure goes up and down, all kind of things happen. You might get migraines, headaches, you might be a little tired, huh? You, huh? you might want to sleep a little bit more. All sorts of things happen. And watch this, even the skin may start to look pale and be cool to the touch. And the patient may exhibit slight changes in behavior. I said, okay. So slight changes in behavior means that the person can become unstable and has no control over the way they behave. And God says sometimes when a condition stays longer than it's intended to stay, that's why some folk act the fool. I delivered them from cussing, but cussing magically shows back up when they're in something too long. I didn't mean to cuss you out, it just slipped out. Don't let it just slip out because it first gets into the mind and you have the option to cast it down. That's why I say cast down all imaginations that exalt itself in the mind before it come out your mouth. So every cuss word that I say out my mouth, I thought about it before I said it. It don't just slip out. That's why the fruit of the spirit is temperance, it's self-control because God provides an escape goal. So if you cuss, you want it to cuss. <laughs> and in that moment, the next time they cuss, just say, I know you in a class two. <laughs> so I kept digging. I said, class three, hemorrhage is 30 to 40% blood loss. I can keep going through this, but I'm going to go on class four. She was a class four. Let the church say class four. Class four. Involves greater than 40% of the blood volume loss. The limit of the body's compensation is reached and aggressive recitation, resuscitation is required to prevent death. She did lost greater than 40%, so that means she flatlined, and you need to be resuscitated. So God said that I had put her at a class four because she had learned how to die. So I had to let her go through something that would cause her to bleed out more than normal because I had to cause her to die in order for her to gain new life. And God said the reason why I've been in what you've been in for a long time is because you've been asking me, God, I don't know how to die. I want you to teach me how to die. So I left, I let the situation stay in your life longer than usual so that I can cause you to die. So God said the good news is that that you in, it can't take you out. You gon' survive it. So watch this. He said, go down the list. Your mama died, but you survived it. Father got sick. Some of y'all, you spent some money, you survived it. Child's in trouble. You survived it. You went through hell. You survived it. Lost everything you had. You survived it. Trying to get better for yourself. And you spent all your money. You're broke. And you got negative $32 in the bank plus NSF fees. But you survived it. Huh? You spent money. And you tried to raise your children the best you could can. And they still acting a fool or went another way. But God said you survived it. God said no matter what you go through, you're a survivor. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 See, I ain't get no shot with that. So I kept looking and put up, I want you to put up verse number 27. Read that text. Here I am, y'all. I'm going to shoot around the corner. Y'all better catch me. It's three prophecies and I'm out. Verse number 27. I think y'all put up that paragraph, don't you? Put up the first paragraph. 
There you go. I want you to start with she. The first she. She slipped in from behind and touched his robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can put a finger on his robe, I can't get well. Say she slipped in. Let the church say she slipped in from behind. She slipped in from behind. Let the church say it again. She slipped in from behind. She slipped in from behind. The lady with the issue of blood. I don't know her name, but the Bible say she came from behind. She came from behind. God said, he told me to tell about 10 people. He's about to bring you from being behind and putting you ahead. He said, there are some folks in here today. He said, I don't know who I'm talking to. He said, some of you, your money has been behind. Your destiny has been behind. Your purpose has been behind. Your anointing has been behind. Your marriage has been behind. He said, I don't know what's been behind in your life. But God said, I'm getting ready to make you come. So she slipped up from behind. Put up verse number 30. At that same moment, Jesus felt energy discharging from him. He turned around to the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? The church said, Who touched me? Who touched me? So for him to say that means that touch had an importance here. So I looked it up, y'all. Y'all know I looked it up. It's hat to may in the Greek. H A P T O M A I. It means to modify or change by touching. <clears throat> to modify or change by touching. Watch this. Touching someone or something in a way that alters them. So Jesus was saying, everybody else touched me. But she was the only one touched me with an intent for her life to be changed. <laughs> He said a lot of folk want the blessing, they want the favor, they want the prophecy, they want the healing, but they don't want their life to be altered. Y'all ain't getting away from it. Then people start adding to those stories. 
story, but they don't know your story. I kind of wish I could get about five people right there. Ain't it funny how folk will look at you and they will judge where you are based upon how you look, but they don't know the story behind the look? I can't get off. They will look at you and say you unapproachable, but they don't know why you got the smug look on your face. You could be in deep thought about your condition and you could be talking to God in the spirit of your mind, but they will judge where you are based upon. You risked it. You took a risk of faith. And because of your risk that you took, he said, I'm going to do two things for you. He said, read it. You took a risk of faith. He said, now you're healed and whole. He said, now you're healed and you're whole. This is a $10 bill. $10, right? Go to the store, I can spend it. I can come to tea town, I can give me a 10 piece, golden, lightly batter, with lemon pepper, some fries, and a sweet tea. Roughly about $11 now, but I can use this $10 and I give it to you. You're gonna take it and it's gonna spin. But if I take this $10 and I tell the $10, and I go to tea time, and I order my same tea piece. And um, I go to the wonder, and I hand her half, no, I give her half the $10 bill. Just because it's half, don't mean she got $5. Yeah. <laughs> It was $10. I tore it in half. Just because I gave a half don't mean I got five. <laughs> because the half won't spin. Yeah. The only way it'll spin and the only way it'll have value. Y'all got it. So if I take this $10 bill and I give it to you and I say, take that 